But this year, this year, right? Is there something that we can prove to ourselves? Forget anybody else. Have you not been a person of your word? I'm talking about you telling yourself you're going to do something. How many of you picked up the last uh, book, book club book, and you said, this is the one I'm going to read for sure. And you didn't do it. Show yourselves. Why not? Yo, show Donnie some love. Y'all ain't really show Donnie no love this morning. So um, y'all know we got to do a lot. Who watches our episodes, our podcast episodes? Okay. So it's very important that we do one uh, live here in Atlanta, Georgia at the world famous Legacy Center uh, for our morning meetup, family reunion. Uh, Do we have a camera set up so we can take questions? Do we have one? We're good? Okay. Where's everybody going to line up? Because we're going to do Q&A. Where? Okay. Yes. So we are going to do Q&A. Um, and hopefully, th- this was Donnie's request. I just wanted to talk because y'all know I like the rant. I just felt like we can't be in a historical building having a historical moment and we just talk at you. I want to hear your questions. I want to know what you need. And we want to get some action steps going from this conversation that we're having today. However, you guys, we are filming a live podcast. So your questions need to be good, they need to be ready, and they need to be straight to the point. How are we starting it off? Um, Well, I still want to rant a little bit. We are going to rant. We are going to rant. Just get Uh, uh, your questions (laughs) ready. We're not coming to the mic this time. Like, I just want to tell you how much I love you. We know y'all just did. (laughs) Good. Okay, so welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We are here live in Atlanta at the World Famous Legacy Center. We are here at the morning meetup family reunion, man. Uh, I'm excited, Donnie. I'm excited to see most of these people. We only see them in little boxes on a Zoom call, which is powerful. We got a chance to get to know each other. But to see everybody live, man, I just can't uh, express my joy for this. This is amazing. This is an amazing group of people here on a Sunday. How many people, just stand up real quick if you traveled to be here today. Wow. Let's give it up. Yes. Hold on. So why Atlanta ain't here? They all, y'all flew and drove. This is crazy. Atlanta's just not here. Y'all here? Let me see Atlanta stand up real quick. I feel like I see some double. Not really. Not really. You're you're here. You're here, but not really. (laughs) Okay. um, So one thing. Oh, thank you. She said, "Turn her mic up." Yeah, because that's what she was signaling. I appreciate it. I got you. If you could just turn my mic up a little bit, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Um. Uh. One thing I did want to discuss. Really, is there anything that y'all want to know? Anything that you want to know right now? For this episode, what are we thinking about? What are we thinking about? What are you thinking about? Who asked that question? (laughs) You see the look on my face right now? (laughs) Well, let's answer the question. What are you you thinking about? In this exact moment, I was thinking about how hungry I am. Um, But uh, you know what, you guys? I have to. We are just a day after... And I have to say this on the Social Proof Podcast, what I'm really thinking about is how proud I am that my only daughter has graduated college from Auburn University. Yes, yes, yes. Deja, this applause is for you. Y'all show her some love. And to answer your question, what I, what I am actually thinking about as a result of that is... Um, Most of you know that my goal is to build a family business, right? It's very important to have select members of my family come in and help me build this legacy. And I'm really excited where we are right now because my daughter has worked for me for the last three years, uh, part-time, throughout college. And in a couple of weeks, she and my little cousin, who's also like a bonus daughter to me, are launching my Atlanta office full-time. And it just, it's, it's a full circle moment, yeah. How many parents do we have in the room? Parents? Oh, it's a lot of y'all. Okay. So, you guys, how many people interested in building a family business? We hear so many times that you cannot 
build business with your friends. You can't build business with your family. And I am living proof that that is absolutely not true. I've got my best friend in the back of the room. Wave your hand, Bree. Bree was the sales manager for me for about two years in my company. She's now gone on and built her own successful business and brand. And now I have my family coming in, helping me to do this. And I am both excited and eagerly, like, I'm nervous about it because I know, like, the vision is coming full circle. It's about to go up. But but uh, we don't know that you know yet. I don't know. So but- it could. It could. You might find out that the things that people are saying about building a family business yeah. is true. I could, or I could listen to like the Dan Cathy's and the Cathy family who built Chick-fil-A and hear that it's amazing and it's possible and it can be done and it's worth it. Those are the voices I'm listening to. For sure. However, <laughs> we don't know what voice Deja's listening to. Oh, or for sure. if she, you know, everybody has their own path and I think yeah. this is a really good conversation to have. Like, How do you instill a goal into someone else? Yeah. Especially even like people that work for you or uh, anybody ever try to do a business with your friends and they with it for them first couple hours. Hours. How, how do you instill a, how do you cast a vision and get someone else to buy into that vision? So, Generally speaking, um, with Dej, my daughter's name is Deja, I did not give her this goal, right? What I did was gave her a part-time job. And I allowed her to also get other jobs. She's worked for, you know, Chick-fil-A and the ice cream shop and Dick's Sporting Goods. I allowed her to go out into the world and see the difference. See how hard you work for someone else, how hard you work here, pick your heart, Right? And over years, as she's matured, like I was really, really intentional about not telling her so much that I wanted to build a family business because I didn't want her to feel obligated to it. But when we started to have the conversation about college, uh, she did not know. She had no clue what she wanted to major in. And I suggested to her that in this day and age, marketing will always be an essential skill. And she's really, really great at, you know, paying attention to the details and the analytics and things like that. So we chose that. And then as she started to perform in my company, I let her know that it was an option. It was available. And when she also saw that I hired my cousin to come in and do some work, I believe she got more excited. She, she, it was less pressure. Uh, in the beginning, she was working with just very grown adults, adults that are my age. But now that I'm building a team that's more youthful, I just put her in the environment. I put Brianna, my cousin, who is my assistant, in the environment, and I'm allowing them to select and solidify their position. They are communicating to me that they want to help me build this to an eight-figure and beyond brand. And I am answer. I'm here. Like, let's do it. Now, if they decide that they don't want to, I have other family. <laughs> but it's going to be family for sure. <laughs> I, uh, anybody here, you want your kids to follow in your footsteps? Mm, I don't want Deja to follow in my footsteps at all. I am a coach. I am uh, really, really great at developing other people in business. And if I look back in hindsight with my experience and the things that I did and how I operated even at her age, I can identify young Donnie being grown, Donnie, growing into this person that I am today. I don't think that's Deja's calling. But, I mean, the exact thing that you do isn't necessarily just following your foot. You might have a, uh, a, I don't know, if I went to the NBA and I had a thriving career on my child, maybe they didn't go to play basketball, but maybe they play football or something like that, following your footsteps. Or if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm building a big business and I want my child, Corey, to build one too, maybe not the same company, but I want them to follow my footsteps in terms of success, right? Yeah. Is that what you want for her? Or do you want her to just be your employee? No, 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 no. So... Yeah, part of it. Like, they will end up Keep being... Keep it real, my, full transparency. They'll end up being my partners, right, in business. They will have high-level positions in the company. They won't just be, like, my employees, unless that's what they desire to be. All I've done, David, over the years, um, I've been building this particular brand since 2014. 
My daughter has had a front row seat to every step of the way. All I have done and will continue to do is to expose them to what this path looks like. If they choose to stay on this path, then I am here leading the charge with them. If they want to go and do something else, which is quite possible, then I will support them in doing that as well. But I am giving them an opportunity right here. Like we have a chance. We have a chance to be the next Hilton family, the next Kathy family. We have a strong opportunity to do that. And I'm offering that to them. Does anybody have uh, great hopes for your kids? You want them to kind of follow your footsteps in terms of like a successful path? Well, I guess we got to look at your footsteps right now, though. <laughs> the footprint that you're leaving. And what I found, too, ma'am, is that a lot of kids do follow in their parents' footsteps, positive and negative. If you go to... Um, if you go to a, an impoverished area, uh, we see a lot of the kids following in the footsteps of the parents. You ever seen somebody say, yo, and, and even successful people today, they always got a story, yo, my dad went to jail, his dad was in jail. I know a bunch of friends who were actually in prison with their father. Or, or we take on the family business, something illegal. Or, or, have you ever met those people where I'm a teacher, my mom was a teacher, her mom was a teacher, I'm a nurse, parent was a nurse, her parent was a nurse? I'm an AKA, daughter's an AKA. I'm not, but you know, the same thing, like even down to your sorority. We got to be careful to know what we're showing our kids. And what are you showing them? Are you showing them how to quit? Are you showing them how to start and stop and start and stop? Are you showing them how to blame everybody else? Are you telling them um, how they're, are you bad mouthing their parent in front of them? I, listen, for me, I am very, very intentional about what my children see. Yeah. Even, you know, you have a disagreement with your spouse, right? But I'm very careful to show them how do we, how to handle this particular disagreement. My child has never seen me cuss at my wife, never seen me disrespect my wife. I've never said anything negative to my child about my wife. This is important. We got to like, we got to show them. Yeah. And here's the thing. Uh, many of us weren't taught by example. We're figuring it out along the way. Guys, I don't, I, I don't come from a perfect background, right? I had some great role models and examples in my life, but I also had some negative ones. And the thing is, you get to choose which one you're more attracted to. You get to choose which one you decide to follow. There was a quote. Hold on real quick. In the back, in the back, that little group, Bryn, 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 can Bryn, no, none of that. Everybody sit down because we can hear y'all back there. So no conversations back there. Everybody just come sit down. I know you're like, man, how to hear us up there? It's like everybody in little conversations makes one big conversation. Cool? Kids crying. I ain't mad at that because I got kids and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm cool with that, okay? All right, thank you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There was a quote. I don't remember who said it, but I heard someone say one day from a stage, and this is when I was at my lowest point. I went to a conference, I snuck into this conference, like when somebody was walking in, looking and they were getting their bag checked, I snuck around them and got in the conference. I know real low life behavior, but I got in and it changed my life. Low vibrational behavior. Very right low vibrational, but I had to get the information right. I heard somebody say, parents, you instill in your kids every single day. You go out there and you tell your kids, you better go to school. You better get, get, get good grades. I expect A's from you. You drop them off at school and then you go back home and you're a failure at home. Meaning you're letting day by day go by that you're not going after your goal. Day by day go by that you're lounging around in bed instead of doing something that you know that you'd be doing. Day by day go by that you're choosing to settle every single day, but you think your words are going to create a shift in your children, right? We have these expectations on our children. Behave, do well, don't embarrass me, be great in life. But then look at your life. Behave, do well. Don't embarrass yourself. Be great in life. When I heard that, it literally changed the way that I looked at life. 
I was a person who had recently gone through a foreclosure, had recently gone through a repossession of multiple vehicles, was playing hide and seek in the dark with my daughter, not because we turned the lights out, but because the lights were out. And I'm telling her every single day, go in there and do great. Sit in here and study. You have to study. You have to be great. You have to get these good grades. I'm telling her all these things, but I'm sitting at home feeling sorry for myself, trying to figure out the next step. Everything that I have done had led me to failure in that moment, but my voice is telling my daughter to go out and be great. When I heard that, I realized I had to match the voice that I had for her with the action and the activity that I had for myself. I could no longer tell my daughter, you better go out there and get good, get good grades. You better go out there and do X, Y, and Z if I weren't doing the work first. And literally, that stuck with me. I never stressed her out about a test if she didn't do well on a test. Did I do well on my test? Did I do well on what I was supposed to do that day? Did I prepare? Did I study? Did I turn the TV off? Did I go to bed at the right time? Did I get out there and beat the pavement? Those are the questions that I started to ask myself and literally the principles that I live by now. Like, I'm really, we're not perfect. We don't have a handbook on how to do this. Guys, you have questions that you will ask us and the, que the answer for me will always come from what I have specifically experienced. I will never tell you something that I read in a book or I will tell you, I don't know, I read in a book that X, Y, and Z. But what I'm telling you is literally coming from experience. You want your kids to follow in your footsteps. I don't want my daughter to follow in my footsteps. I want her to create her own path. I just want her to realize and recognize the opportunity that she has here with me and find her place in it if that's what she con con uh, chooses to do long term. I think I got a little list of things. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about some of the things you want your kid to learn? We're going up. Let's make a little list, okay? I got, I got one. Good. One thing that, uh, that I 100% want my child to do or learn is consistency. I want my child to see me doing the same thing for a long period of time. So it was, it was just so dope that uh, I forgot what we were talking about. But my daughter was there, and I, was, I think I was trying to prove to my, uh, my family that I work hard, I think. It was a, we had a bunch of people in our house that lived there. <laughs> Word, it's mad people. But I'm like, yo, um, I'm like, yo, I, I started out with, yo, I get up at 6.30 every morning, I started talking, and then Corey, who's my 12-year-old daughter, y'all know Corey? Y'all know Corey, okay. She was like, yeah, he do get up at 6.30 every morning, I see him. That really stuck with me, though. It seems like a passing by, oh, I just noticed it. She's like, oh, yeah, I see it. But I realized, yo, she sees that. It's not like I wake her up because she got to go to school. It's not like I'm, I'm saying, hey, it's 6.30, look at me. I wake up at 6.30 every single morning, hit the snooze button once. What? You judging me? Okay, yeah, we talked about it. I hit the snooze button once, and then I get up, and then I go in Sarai's room, and I start reading. That's my morning routine. Every now and again, she'll walk and she'll see me reading, doing the same thing every single day. What do you think that does for her? It at least shows, wow, my dad is committed to something. My dad has a routine. And hopefully, hopefully, maybe she goes to college and maybe she does, you know, some other things that she wants to do with her life. But she remembers that, yo, I'm going to get up at the same time every day to make something of myself. Maybe this is a key of success. So one thing I would definitely want to teach my kids is consistency. Um, God, there's so much that I want Deja to learn. I think, especially when she was younger, uh, self-respect was really, really big for me. So when my daughter's father and I decided to call off our engagement and we went our separate ways, one of the promises that I made to Deja was that she would always remain my top priority. So she didn't grow up with her mom like dating a lot, at least she didn't see it. Um, she didn't grow up with her mom dating a lot. Like I didn't have men in and out of my house. Uh, I was very, very intentional. Like, and mm. I, I also made the promise to her father, your daughter will not be laying in this house with a man that I am not committed to. I just could not do it. And it worked kind of like a double-edged sword because I created this habit 
for her at a very young age. But then as she got a little older and I wanted to start dating, like now one of the biggest things that I worry about is, well, when she comes back home, mama is in these streets. All right. (laughs) You're a grown woman now, girl. She's never she's never had the experience ever in her whole life with me being a single mom since she was seven years old, six or seven years old. She's never seen a man sleep in my home. And it was because I respected her so much that I had to respect myself. And I cared about what she thought of me. I cared about her at 21 years old, 16 years old, 13 years old, what type of respect would she have for herself, where men were concerned and how she would carry herself. And I think I've done a good job at, at teaching her that. But that was, that was the number one priority for me when I initially became a single mom. How many people, your kids, see you? I'm just waiting. <laughs> now, when she went to her dad's house... <laughs> that would be a wild We had a little company answer. come through the front door, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. My, my daughter's seen me with a couple dudes come in and out. I don't. Anybody going to be transparent today? I'll just wait. You don't have to answer that. Um, it is important, though, right? It is important. So, what, what will be the, um, what's the takeaway that you want, that you want intentionally, wanted Deja to see from you? Um, a couple of things. Number one, I wasn't, I wasn't married, I'd failed in that relationship. I didn't desire to be married, and I just wanted her to see a healthy mom in relationships. Like, fast forward a couple of years, maybe three years later, her fa- four years later, her father got married. So I knew, okay, she's going to get a great lesson. He chose an amazing bonus mom for her. She's going to get the lesson about marriage and how to love and be in that type of community from him. From me because marriage had not become a priority for me at that time, she is going to see a mom who respects herself. Mm. And she's going to learn as a woman how to respect herself. And, you know, there was business that I kept from her. That doesn't mean I wasn't perfect. I was dating. I was seeing men. It's just not the picture that I painted for her. 100%. Uh, Mine would be um, integrity, for sure. Integrity. Yeah, even outside of my kids... You can ask anyone that like works for me or works with me on a regular basis. They know I have integrity. I'm not going to say something just to get a deal done and tell my team, hey guys, let's tell them this. And that's not true. Because I know that they will look at me and say, yo, well, Dave does lack integrity. Reese, change that clock for me, please. Integrity. I don't ever want to, I don't, it was, it was one time uh, we was watching a, uh, uh, it was a show when I was little. And the comedian was like talking about how black people handle bill collectors. And they put their kid on the phone and the kid has to say what? My well, daddy ain't here. Tell him I ain't here. And I, I remember one time uh, no slight, uh, no slight to my aunt, but I'm at my aunt's house, and she says, pick up the phone. So I pick up the phone. It's a bill collector. I know I might, I might be 12 at this point, and my aunt's like, I hear. Instantly, I was like, yo, wow, she's a liar. <laughs> I was, have been a liar. But, but I, I, just, I, don't know, I don't know why that, this isn't like a motivation, I don't know why that stuck in my mind. But I remember for a long time not being able to trust that person. I don't know if you're telling me the truth. So in front of my kids, I want to make sure that they know daddy has integrity because other people can trust me, meaning you can trust me too. Maybe none of the stuff I'm talking about matters. Maybe it's not as serious as I'm making it. But these are some, when I look at my kids, I want them to know that they can fight on my behalf, that they dad got integrity. But I think some of us, we don't care for ourselves. We just don't care, right? Um, I always want to be a man of my word. My wife told me, we intermittent fasting together. Y'all saw my post? (laughs) We intermittent fasting. We said we was going to eat between the hours of 12 and 8. Both of us, 
12 and 8. We do not eat before 12 noon, and we don't eat after 8 p.m. And I just got off the call. Remember, I was talking about it, and I said, yo, you need to have something to lose. And I know one thing that's not going to be comfortable for my wife or any of y'all spouses is y'all spouse out having fun while, you know what I mean? Do Noah like you having fun by yourself? Not really, right? <laughs> Nobody can stand their significant other having fun without them. Or is that just my house? No? Oh, y'all ain't going to be real in here? Okay. <laughs> I was like, well, yo, if you break this, I'm going to Miami for a week. She's like, all right, bet. And I said, well, what's yours? She's like, I ain't come up with it yet. I'm like, all right, well. So I asked her. And I don't know where it came from. The good news is my wife has integrity, so she's not going to lie to me. And I said, yo, did you eat after eight? She said, yes. I said, I'm going to Miami. That's not what happened. That is exactly what happened. No, she's, you said, yo, did you eat? And she said, just go ahead and go to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> just go on and go to Miami. <laughs> that was integrity. That was integrity, yes. But I feel like on my part, it, it's even more integrity that I'm a man of my word to book my flight. I'm out. I'm not playing with you. (laughs) I was going to say double or nothing, but she might be serious this time, and I really want to go to Miami without them kids. I love my kids. But this year, this year, right, is there something that we can prove to ourselves? Is there something? Somebody line up at the mic. I want to hear. If, If any of this hits a nerve with you, is there anybody here that is something you need to prove to yourself? Forget anybody else. Have you not been a person of your word? I'm talking about you telling yourself you're going to do something. How many of you picked up the last uh, book, book club book, and you said, this is what I'm going to read, for sure. And you didn't do it. Show yourselves. Why not? Go to the mic. Go to the mic. I want to know. Why not? It's a mic right there in front of a little green... A uh, thing I paid for with the grass on it. It's a lot of grass in here. It, it, they they charge about a square foot too. <laughs> first, firstly, I want to say I appreciate this accountability because uh, striking me right here. Appreciate that, Dave. Thank Good. you. Um, I didn't do it because I allowed myself to tell myself that I was taking in too much information and that if I picked up the next book, it's just going to be more of me tricking myself into reading a book that I'm not going to apply. And in turn, it allowed me to really unplug myself from all the other things that I was doing. I unplugged from the morning meeting for almost a year. Mm. And I finally got plugged back in. And when I plugged back in, some community members, shout out to y'all, welcomed me with open arms. But this is the time where I'm actually abiding by my tattoo. No fear, no excuses. I am back in this thing day in and day out. And I'm looking forward to it. Are you sure? The accountability of this community is, is... Are you sure? Let me ask you. Are you sure? Yes. Have you ever been dedicated to something before and you failed? Yes. Why? Because I gave myself some excuse as to why it was okay for me to take a day off. Mm. And a day turns to two, turns to a week, turns to a month, turns to a year. And next thing you know, we're looking at a year from this point and we're back in the same spot that we were last year. And there's a point... I had a very similar experience to what you just described. My son just turned 12, and I'm looking at him as he gets older and his voice gets deeper and he gets almost as tall as me, thinking about what kind of example am I setting for him. Mm. There is a point where, as a man, I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, this isn't about me anymore. This is about being an example that I can be for my son. I didn't have that. He's got the benefit of having somebody he can look up to. What am I showing him? At this point, it's not about me. You said yourself, we'll do things for other people that we won't necessarily do for ourselves. And I'm one of those people. I will do things for my son and for my daughter that I wouldn't necessarily do for myself. But now I see very clearly in the type of young man that he's becoming what I have to be for him. Wow. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Before I give you the next thing that I want my daughter to learn, I want to say something about integrity. Integrity requires practice. Yeah. And I have not always been the most integral person, right? Meaning I always meant well by people. I always thought it was a good idea when I said it, 
even down to, you know, yeah, I'll meet you there. I'm going to go. And then it's like, I'm looking for every excuse not to go. That's an integrity issue. Not doing what you said you were going to do, right? So one little thing, it's a baby step. It may seem so small. That's helped me to practice my integrity. I, I started doing this about four years ago. Making my bed every single day. It doesn't matter how late I wake up, how much I have to do. I needed to prove to myself that I could make a commitment to myself and honor it every single day. And in the beginning, when I would not make my bed, like when I would be kind of on the wagon, off the wagon, I would leave home and literally be like, dang. I couldn't even stay committed to making my bed. Mm. I only sleep on one half of it. The other side (laughs) stays made. All you literally have to do is pull the sheets back. And I couldn't commit to the 30 seconds that it took to making my bed. That was the thing. Recently this year is working out. I said I would work out every single day for 30 days. I went 46 days straight just to prove, yes, that I would do it. So one of the things that you want to do is make small promises to yourself for a period of time and keep them. And then don't overcommit to other people so it doesn't challenge you in your integrity, right? Okay, next thing. Yes. Uh, and, and if you have anything to share, just go to the mic and line up and we're going to get to you, okay? Is the line there? Is that a line yet? No, that's no? a picture. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. The next thing, uh, what I really want my daughter to learn is critical thinking skills. Mm. It is one of the best, is that a characteristic trait? It's one of the best characteristic traits that I possess. I know how to critically think. Thanks to my dad, uh, my stepfather, Walter, he taught me how to critically think. So I grew up in a household where my mom was kind of like the creative brain. She was always trying to start the businesses, aspiring entrepreneur, just kind of free and doing whatever. My dad, however, was a career engineer. And so he had to figure out how to solve problems for a living. And when you're thinking about engineering problems, it's not just one way to get to it. Sometimes you have to think about other ways to approach a scenario to get to your solution. And when I would do simple things like my homework, sitting at the dinner table with him, he checked my homework every single night. If I had a question, what is two plus two? It couldn't just be that it was four. Well, I don't know, let's think about this critically. If I have this one finger here and this other finger here and I put two more fingers up, how do you do blah, 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 blah? Well, then if I put three fingers on this finger and one finger here, do you still get the same answer? So then I developed a a desire to become an engineer because I wanted to use, make use of my critical thinking skills. I would not remain an engineer for more than like a summer, but the skill set of learning how to critically think, meaning, Seeing a problem and there not being a, criti- a, a clear solution, but I can figure out just this very small piece, and if I figure out just this very small piece, I can use that and take it to figure out this very small piece. This very small piece put me three pieces ahead, so now I have this piece of the puzzle, and then you keep going until you find an answer. You can see how pieces fit together. You can see how you can move the pieces around on the board, and that has literally been game changing for me. One of the affirmations next to my bed, I have two that are next to my bed. I have like a hundred all over my bathroom. One of my affirmations is I believe in my ability to figure it out by using my critical thinking skills. You have to learn how to look at a scenario and the answer not appear clearly. It's not there. You don't have anybody to ask, but you know how to think. You know how to ask yourself some fact-finding questions. You know how to sit back and look at it from the back door, the front door, through the crack in the window, approach it from a 90-degree angle, a 45-degree angle. You're going to get the answer at the end of the day because you critically thought through the process step by step. It's going to save your life. With what you have to do right now in your business, if you can read this book, and take what the answers are in that book and apply it to your life and say, okay, now we're picking up some traction. And then you go and watch that documentary and you go and apply what you've learned there and you're picking up a little bit more traction and you're here at the podcast taping and you're getting something that feeds you and you're seeing in your head how these pieces make, make sense. You will become your own solution. That's a fact. 
Um, I think I wrote about that in my, in, in my book, uh, Dreams Are Built Overnight, how I just had the most amazing dad in the world because the same thing, he's not just going to give me the answer. And he would have to, I would have to pick it, right? I'd have to, he wants to know that I thought through it first. But eventually, if I get frustrated, I'll just pick it, I'll just start picking answers. And that's when I'm in trouble. If I, six, 12, 13. He'll say, now you're guessing. Now you're about to make me mad because you're not dumb. Yeah. He said, I, he said I, I can accept you giving me the wrong answer if you have a good reason why you're picking that answer. And I just realized that even to this day, that's a reason that I've never been afraid to get it wrong. That's why I tell people, just hurry up. If you're starting a business, just hurry up and fail. Yeah. Just get it out the way. Get it wrong. Because eventually... One, it's not going to kill you, but eventually you'll get the right answer, probably by getting the wrong answer. Make sense? But some of it, like when I do workshops, I have these sessions where you have to like figure something out and I can see when people check out. I'm talking about after a few minutes. If I'm saying, okay, here's the problem. I want you to think about it and solve this problem. You can physically see people check out, put their pen down and jump on their phone and just stop. Or just start looking at other people. Because most people have never taken time to think. That's so important. When you're navigating throughout your day, like little things, me and my best friend are always having conversations about, well, why? Why does that work? Like, kids are the most critically thinking beings on the planet. You hear me? How many of you got kids that be like, why? Oh, why? 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 How? And you be so annoyed and you're like, don't ask me any more questions. I challenge you to allow them to continue to ask questions. And I challenge you to be inspired by them and you start asking questions. Don't just sit there. I was on a live last week. I was getting a chemical pill. And I'm on live with you guys, and I'm taking you through this process of getting a chemical pill, and I'm asking my esthetician, well, why? How does that work? What's it doing? How does this one get down to the third layer of the skin? How do you know it's the third layer of the skin? And someone said to me, like, wow, the way you think and ask questions, like, I understand now why your skill set is your skill set. Ask more questions. If you're writing down or taking notes somewhere, I want you to put that at the top of your paper every single day. Ask more questions. Don't just accept the fact that something works. Don't just accept the fact that you got the final answer. Don't just accept the fact that this is a complete product in front of you. Take something apart. You know how many like bikes? I used to take motorcycles apart with my dad. Cars and bikes and watches I've taken apart just to put it back together because I wanted to understand how everything worked together. Absolutely. Goodness gracious. You, you, got a, uh, you got something? What you got? Yes, sir. My name's uh, Che Willis of the Wealth is a Journey podcast on YouTube. Um, how do you guys go about allowing your kids to fail? Because I think that's the greatest teacher. So how do you guys go about that? Um, one, uh, from yesterday, this was last night. So she's trying to take the top off the bottle so we can put water in it. But I... Uh, She's, she turns it to the left, but she keeps her hand on it, and she turns to the right. When she sees me screw it, she just sees this, right? So if you don't take your hand off, then it's going to tighten. It's like this, right? So it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm like, honey, you can, I said, like, take your hand off. My first inclina- inclination is, okay, give me the bottle. Let me turn it. Let me take it off. But I'm like, no. Turn, release your hand. Turn it, take your hand off. Turn it, take your hand off. And she was still doing this for a little while. And she's like, Daddy, do it. I said, no, you can. You can do it. So she took it, turned it, took her hand off. And did it again. And when she took it off, I celebrated her so big. Oh, my gosh. Yo, congrats. You did it, baby. Oh, my gosh. You're so smart. I started clapping. She's like, yeah. Now give me my water. So I did pour the water. But my objective is to let them. Right, she's about to, she's going up the stairs, and uh, my mother-in-law like she's it was like going down the stairs. She had like three more steps left, and she's like, "Daddy, daddy, daddy." I'm like, "No, come on down." She's like, "Daddy, daddy," and my mother-in-law goes to grab, and I'm like, "No, let her. She'll be okay." After she's done screaming and crying and all that kind of stuff, she's gonna take another step down the stairs. 
it's going to be okay. So you got to let them. And I mean, it's even cool to put them in scenarios where they just got to figure, just try something. I don't care if you get it right or wrong. There's no reward system here. Whether if you get it right or wrong, obviously we're going to celebrate when you get it right, but like, let's just try something. I don't know how my wife be teaching my daughter all these words, but every time I go out of town and come back, she knows mad more words, right? But it's that repetition. Hey, do it, do it, do it, say it, say it, say it, do it, do it, do it. So just let them do it. Yeah. For me, I think uh, it stems from my own childhood. I couldn't be a failure in my house. Everything bad to my mom is a big deal (laughs) to this day. Everything good to her is also a big deal. And I remember uh, just growing up in an environment where I was afraid, so scared to make a mistake and fail because I would get fussed at so bad. And my mom just is relentless. She just does not stop. And another thing, and another thing. And let me tell you one more time, and then two weeks later, and you remember when you did, I'm like, oh my God, like you could not live the failure down. Fast forward to me trying to find myself as an adult, not really feeling like I fit into a lot of environments and the choices that I had made because of uh, the leadership of my family, my parents. I remember trying like music. And us having a hard time getting the type of deal that we wanted and, you know, struggling to really jump that career off. And my mom would just say, I come home with like songs and she'd say, oh, you need to go back to school. Zell, we were just in the car last night and I let Zell hear one of the songs back from 2010 that me and my girl group did. Do you have it still? I do. Let's play the song. Can we play the song? Do (laughs) not. I I played this song for Zell. And my mom is in the back seat. We're coming back up for my, gradu- my daughter's graduation. 2010, I play this song and she say, eh, sounds good, it's all right. Because she felt like music, in lieu of me graduating college, was the epic failure, right? Last night, now that I've created a little bit of success, I'm playing the song for her and Zell. Zell was like, that's dope. First words came out of my mom's mouth. That song should have been a hit. (laughs) Am I lying, Zell? It's a change in perspective because of who I am at this point. But I remember trying so many things and not having success at it and seeing the disappointment in my mom's face or being fussed at or being kind of talked down at that when my daughter started to try things and not do well, I celebrated her anyway I allowed her to go through the process because I remember what it felt like to not feel comfortable going through my own process. So sometimes, as long as it's not going to create any serious harm for her or cost me money, I will allow her to go through a process because she has to figure it out. The other thing to that, my final thing to that is, I also understand that if you don't let your children do something and fail and allow them to do it in front of you as their witness and get your reaction that's supportive, they're going to sneak and do these things behind your back. And like me, it's going to develop this resentment on the inside where you don't share anything, positive or negative, because you're afraid of the feedback in the event that you fail. I never even thought about that. Y'all think some of your trauma around not wanting to get started or overthinking has been because you weren't allowed to get stuff wrong growing up? Like, as you think about it, anybody just had a realization, like, dang, as I grew up, they just never let me... It was so bad when I got it wrong. Maybe that's something we got to deal with. I was, I was just blessed. My, my dad, he, he ne- I never got in trouble for getting it wrong. I only got in trouble for not trying. Yeah. <laughs> Let me stay focused, y'all. Okay. Let's stay focused. You have a question? Yes. If you have any questions, uh, we're we just going to jump into Q&A. And uh, yes. Do me a favor, though, you guys. Um, limit the backstory. We want to get as many people as possible. Just get, if you have a statement, my, my comment is, if it's a question, my question is. Yep. Let's do it. Um, great new day. Uh, my name is Camila Shueb of Love is Always a Subject, and I wanted to speak to the ideal about fl- um, failure. 
I grew up in a time when this she don't care. level of... Did she, she just, she is she going to backstory me? She ain't hear nothing Did I just say and no backstory? backstory? Did I just request... <laughs> How the, do you create a system to allow your child to see the failure and give the lesson when you have not yet figured out the lesson? I think good. Okay, give her a round of applause for actually asking a question. She was going good, there. too. I think it's, um, it's about transparency. It, if, if you are trying and it's not working, and it's trying and, it, and, and it's not working, I think it's cool to communicate that to your child. Because the real lesson is, mommy not going to stop. Mommy's not going to stop. This is what we're working on. It didn't work out. This is what we're working on. This is what we're working out. This is why, honey, I need you to hold me accountable. If you keep starting and stopping me, hey, hold me accountable because we're going to get to do this together. But we're not embellishing in front of our child to look like something that we're not. I think it's just important to be transparent. I think it's incredibly important to not attempt to show a perfect picture to your kids. If you don't know the answer, if you don't have the answer... I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. Like one of the things that will serve you as a parent is to allow your, we try so hard to hide stuff from our kids. Like they can't see that we're struggling. They can't see that we're hurt. They can't see that X, Y, and Z. And while you don't want to overwhelm them with a bunch of struggle and a bunch of hurt, like this is life, life is lifing. And they can tell that something is going on with mommy or daddy It is your responsibility to be as transparent with them as possible. And it's a huge life lesson to them to know that you are figuring it out step by step. Because if all you show them is perfection, they're going to grow to be children who turn into adults who are afraid to move. Some of you in this room are afraid to move because all you saw was perfection. All you saw was the end result. So you're scared of the start. You're scared of the middle. You're scared of starting over because nobody ever showed you that part of the process. Don't do that to your children. Show them the journey step by step and you will raise children that understand that things are not going to be perfect. They're not going to have all the answers. They're not going to feel great about every decision. They will be scared. They will stop. They will start over. They will take 10 steps just to go 12 back and they're going to wake up and do it again. Show them the journey. I love it. Good stuff. What's up? All right. If you had the if you had the same mindset you have now, back then, do you think how how far do you think you would have gone or would have been at? <laughs> Give me another question. All right. Uh, what would you do if you can go back? Let me ask you this question: Is there anything that you're struggling with? Yeah. What is it? It's really consistency, to, to be honest. So what he's asking is, if we could go back and be consistent sooner, what would we have done to be more consistent sooner? Yeah, but he said, if we can go back and with what we know now, how much further along would I be? Who knows? Who cares? We're here, right? So that question adds no value for you, right? It really doesn't. If you're struggling for consistency, and this is for everybody in that line, Make sure the question that you're asking can actually generate value for you today. All right? So, you're struggling with consistency, and you need to know what steps you can take to become more consistent. Let me let him ask it. Ask a question that you really need to answer to. Uh, What steps do you need to take to be more productive and consistent? Why do you need to know that answer? Because I need to know it from somebody that did it. And if you can do it, I can do it. Are you sure? I'm positive. How do you know? Because we're all human beings. We are. Okay. One of the steps to be more consistent is I have my wife, and I told her to keep me consistent every single day. Are you married? No, no. Great. This information isn't going to work for you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want you to, like, dig deep. There's something... And what I've noticed is the problem that we think is the problem isn't the problem. It's always something under that. Always. My issue isn't, is, uh, my issue is I'm not consistent. But there's a reason why you're not consistent. Maybe you haven't found what you love. 
Maybe you haven't found something that you even want to be consistent in. Maybe consistency isn't really big for you, but you feel like other people are talking about it, so I need to be more consistent. I don't know. But I want you to think. Just you got one more chance to ask a question before you think deeply, transparently. Something maybe you wouldn't ask in front of all these people. Give me a question. I got a thing on the fan. It's okay. Just go to second. You're going to be next. You're not going to the back of the line, but you're going to next. Sam, what's up? Hey, what's going on, y'all? So my question, and I wrote it down to make sure I didn't forget. Um, So this year I got more clarity in my business as a professional speaker and a staff development consultant. So my question for you is, what were some of y'all next steps that both of you took to implement in your business once you started to gain clarity and started to gain traction in your business to take it to that next level? Got it. Yeah. So uh, uh, there are several things, and it really depends on where you are in your business. But when my business started to gain traction, right. uh, I doubled down, number one, right, on the activity. So looking at the analytics, what does gain traction mean for you in your business? And then do more of that activity. Double down on it, triple down on it, quadruple down on it. Uh, the other thing that I started to do when my business started to gain traction was take the money from the business and reinvest it back into my business. Now, be clear, when I initially started my business, I still had a full-time job. So for me, I didn't necessarily have to use 100% of the money that I made in my business on my lifestyle, and that is very important. There are a lot of you that can't get to your next level because as soon as you start making money, you quit your full-time job. Biggest mistake you can make. It's so much easier to build your business from a place of ease and flow than it is from a place of having your back up against the wall. It's possible, but you just don't have to do that. So I leveraged my money and invested it back into my business. Um, Also, I recognized the areas that I needed help in. What were the things that I was doing a lot of that either I wasn't great at or was taking so much of my time that it couldn't allow me to do the things to generate new business? Um, For me, that was like sales calls, things like that. So that was, I believe, the first position that I delegated out in my team because I was busy on the phone doing calls all day. And if I'm in the house doing calls, then I couldn't be in the field networking and meeting people. Um, Those are just a couple of things that I did. Uh, And then also invested heavily, invested heavily, like as time started to go on, even way back then, I invested heavily into mentorship. I've I've been investing in mentorship heavily for the last 12 years. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, As soon as you get clear, um, the, the, the things that you need to do get clear too, and it can get overwhelming. Once you like really focus on the direction, it's almost like dusting everything off and you see, whoa, it's clear the things that I need to do and that could get overwhelming. So as soon as I got clear, I made a list of all the things I needed to do and I picked one to work on today. So if you're starting a coaching consulting business, you need to do a photo shoot, you need to uh, get a website design, you need to come up with your price list, you need to come up with an EPK, a press kit, you need to set up an email address. There's so many things that you need to do, right? But we need to pick one and focus on it. Let me just start completing things one by one. Anybody ever get really clear, then it gets overwhelming? I know where I'm going now, but wow. Now that I know, I know there's mad stuff I got to do. But we just focus on one piece at a time. I appreciate right? both of y'all. Thank you. No problem. Welcome. Let's do it. Let's go. Everybody look at them. I'm just playing. <laughs> On the count of three, everybody say, ask a good question. One, two, three. Ask a good question. All right, what's some advice that you have for somebody with fear of failing? Mm, okay. You're afraid of... Give That's a good walk. question. <laughs> um, one, you just got to understand that the failure isn't real. It's something that you created in your head. It's not an actual thing yet, right? We're afraid of failure. If we succeeded in something and we're afraid that we might lose it, that's in our head, but, even, but, but at least that's a little more real because we have something. And the reality is I can lose the thing that I have. But most of the people, 
that are afraid of failure aren't afraid of failure. You're afraid to start. So my advice would be to start. Take one step that you feel that you can take in the right direction. I'm not, you're not afraid of failing. You're afraid of starting. And once you start, you won't be as afraid of it anymore because you're doing it again. And then you just take one step. You're not afraid of the next step, I'm sure. But you just have to take it. But we wrap all of this into afraid of failure. So what I'd like you to do when you go home, just make a little list of things that you think you're afraid of. And I guarantee you, out of that list of all the things you think you're afraid of, if you ask yourself, why am I afraid of this? You'll realize how silly it is. I have something to that too. You're afraid of the start, but you're also not afraid of failure. What you're more afraid of is judgment. And we got to get real, real clear, right? And I'm about to set you free. Come on. You're afraid of the judgment. Let's make sure she sets him free first. Before we, before we clap, you know what I mean? Give her flowers. You are afraid of the judgment of someone or some people, right? Mm-hmm. Would, yes? All right. What I want you to do when you're, the next time you're thinking about, oh, I'm afraid to fail. You're afraid to fail because you're afraid of everybody seeing it. You're afraid of people saying, I told you so, or laughing at you, or whatever behind your back. I want you to write down a list of the names of the people who would judge you that you care about. And then I want you to, next to their name, I want you to write down what they've done that's so great that makes you afraid <laughs> of your start. Okay, we can clap. She's cooking right now. All right? I want you to write next to their name what they have done that makes them so great that you feel inferior because of their greatness, right? Secondly, I want you to write down why they're so important to you and why their opinion actually matters to you, okay? What you are going to find for 90% of the names on this list is that you are afraid of being judged by people who spend 100% of their time judging other people and doing nothing for themselves. Stop being afraid of the judgment of others because chances are what you are trying to do is more than they have ever done. Yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Now that's how you ask a question. What I'm talking about. What's up? Six feet. (laughs) Hello, everybody. My name is Freddie Johnson. Oh. Donnie, stop being a little thought. Calm down. Because that's not how Freddie asks questions on Wednesday morning at the Social Proof Studio. I've never heard that voice before, Freddie. (laughs) This is a good mic. I don't know whose mic this is, but this mic is dope. What's your question? You want to sing. But anyway. my question is about timing because when I got up, we were talking about raising children, and I think this also applies to our business. When do you know that it's time to implement or to teach certain lessons or to uh, execute certain lessons that you've learned or that you know that needs to be applied? I know Donnie is excellent at creating systems, um, and that's, that's one of my main challenges. I don't always know when to say now. So it's a timing question. It's for your business or as a parent or what? Both. Um, I think the time is always now when you know what you need to do. Where's that question coming from for you personally? For me personally, I'm in a process of coming back up Mm -hmm. business-wise. Yep. And I'm also having some challenges as a father um, when it comes to my youngest son um, because I went through a rough divorce and basically, not to tell too much of my business, but his mom had shared something with him um, that happened some years ago that has him looking at me differently, even though what was interpreted is not necessarily true. So I know there's certain things that I shouldn't share with him now because he's only 12, but I don't know exactly how to be able to put it to be able to fix his perception of me. Wow. And also in my business, I'm in the process of coming back up. I was making strong six figures. And um, as, a, as a result of the divorce, there's a lot that's been taken from me 
that I'm trying to rebuild right now. And what my ex-wife had to say to me is, the only reason why I had the success that I have is because of her. But I know that's not true. So I'm fighting through pain right now and looking to sift through the, these different thoughts in my mind to be able to implement lessons that I've been learning. Because I've been tuning in quite hard, especially these past years, and I've learned a lot of lessons from you, from Donnie, from Trap, from Neo, from so many people, from Terika, from so many people, and just learning right now, realigning everything to know when to apply what lesson. Because I'm on my way up, and I'm coming back stronger than ever. So I'll take the one... Take the picture. Just take the picture. Go ahead. I'm clapping. Um, the one with your child. I think there's an elephant in the room. Your child knows it. You know it. Now is the time to talk about it. You understand? Yes, I mean, because I, otherwise, your child is just going to believe what they believe without any clarity. So you know now is the time. There's no better time than when there's, a, there's, there's an elephant in the room because you're saying it, so he knows. So now is the time to talk, to, talk about it. Let's get clear. And I'm clearing my name immediately. Yeah. But I don't know how sensitive the nature of the conversation is, so maybe you can't say it. I don't know. If, if your wife or ex-wife said it, then you need to say it. Right? If she inferred it, then you show him differently. Like, let your actions prove that you are somebody different. Okay. But uh, he, he was saying she told him something, and I'm going to imagine there's some truth to it, but not all the way. Yeah, not all the way. Yeah. yeah. If, if she had enough. a clear conversation, then you are allowed to have a clear defense, right? Yeah. That's how I feel. And that, I'm not a parent... Uh, psycho child psychologist. I don't know. I do know though that Donnie Wiggins is clearing her name immediately. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's okay. my advice. All right. I don't know that I understood the question about the business. Let's though. just try to do one. Is that one? Did, did that help you? Yes. Though? Okay. I'm gonna try to get. To, let's try to get through the line because we got we got some fun to have in a second. Give him a round of applause. I got you though. But you can ask the question. We'll be here. We'll be here. All right. What you got? Brian, big beater broker, 14K. You know, I'll be on the morning meetup. In the mic, in the mic. Yes. Sorry. Um, so my question is, I feel like um, I'm never happy with my current situation. I always feel like I want to do more. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like I struggle with start and stop. Um, any advice? Because, um, you know, I always feel like I want to do more. I always feel like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to do more. But I also feel like sometimes I slow down. Do okay, more. do something before you do more. Do one thing, do it well, do it excellently, and then go do more. And real quick, when you say you want to do more, is it like more stuff or more no. stuff inside of a particular lane? More stuff inside of what I'm doing. Yeah. Still, yeah, for do sure. one of those things very well. Jot down all the other mores that you want because there will always be more. Mm -hmm. Mores right now until you do something successfully or strongly are just distractions. Yeah. Mores look like goals to you, but if it's preventing you from making a start somewhere else, it's just a distraction. So write down all of those mores, do one thing very well, and then reward yourself by bringing on another more. Thank you. Good. Good. Very welcome. Cynthia, where are we at on time? Where are we at on time? Okay, because I know we got, uh, okay. I feel a little short for the mic. Just but... pull it down, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Bryn. <All> right. <laughs> no, that's not the right way. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Maceo. Uh, I go by the ERG Homegirl, all things e employee resource groups. My question is really a follow-up to your question earlier, David, about motivating, but I don't have kids. It's more so for my team, especially when my business is like based on my brand that I'm super passionate about, something I care about. So when it comes to having a team and even building my team off of something I care about, I don't know how to make them care as much as I care. And that's why I'm nervous to hire because if they don't have that same energy, I don't know how it's going to go. So yeah. Why should they care? I don't know. 
But I mean, if they're working for the business, I feel like you should care. They're working and, for a check. Well, yeah. If you don't know why they should care, then they definitely don't care. So they need incentives, maybe? To no. No? <laughs> no. So I think we got a really good team of people who care. But I think one of the reasons is I'm always talking about the future. And how they're going to be inside that future. Always. Everybody like that, that, I, that I work with, like they're inside the future of the Grove. So we're going to get excited, not because I'm excited, but because this is something that's going to benefit them. I know why some people should care. I know. We are fun. We're going to be learning. We're going to be growing. I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to teach you when you're wrong. But you need to figure out a reason. If you were working for you, why would you get excited? And until you come up with an answer, you are not going to accomplish that goal. All right. Well, thank you. Good. You're welcome. Truly. Am I too loud? How's everybody doing? Cool My intro. Name is truly, truly with trulyfashionhouse.com. Uh, I'm a clothing designer and also a confidence coach. Okay. So uh, my question is, what do you see as the future of podcasting and how do you plan to stay ahead of the curve in terms of brand development and innovation? Oh, it's growing leaps and bounds. Just look at the numbers and the trends. It's growing. Here's what's important and why I'm so focused on everyone needs to start a podcast because podcasting is super young right now. And the only reason, well, there's a couple of reasons. Joe Rogan got a $100 million deal, but... I think only because he's been doing it well longer than anybody else. He been, he's like 14 years in. Yep. Now he had, he had the show with Fear Factor and he had like some celebrity to him, but everybody else wasn't doing it. But he stayed consistent and did it longer than anybody else. So what's important in podcasting is there are people tuned in and there will be more people tuned in and it is a way of life now. 10 years ago, if you ask somebody, what's your favorite podcast, you'd be inclined to say, what's a podcast? Right. But now, 55% of Americans have listened to podcasts. Correct. There's a large group of people who listen to podcasts on a regular basis. So it's growing. And people are falling in love with personalities. Yeah, I, uh, I have three podcasts, and um, I'm coming to the podcast summit. I'll see Donnie and y'all in New York. And my biggest thing is just scale. Why do you have three podcasts? Um, because they're based on my lifestyle and with one podcast, I can pull up, pull away two different segments that feed my other podcast. That's going to be tough to build. Um, okay. Well, I have one primary podcast, uh, but the other two are, are so easy to get done, which is why I have more than one. I mean, the ease of something to get done doesn't necessarily make it a good idea. Correct. I'm just now about to launch my second podcast. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I have one podcast platform but i have three types of segments if you will if that makes sense yeah i get i understand it's just okay cool i would focus on one and get people to know you and fall in love with you okay um from a scale standpoint should i focus on the one that has the most eyeballs on it ask yourself that question real quick (laughs) no ask yourself what's your name my name is truly i want you to say truly from a scale perspective should i focus on the one that has more eyeballs on it what you think? You're Your coach. turn. You, you go, real quick. Uh, truly. Start with truly. Truly? <laughs> you think I should focus on one that got the most eyeballs, dog? Huh. Or the ones that I'm really passionate about? Mm. That's a good question. Here's, uh, good, here's the good news. Yeah. Pick one, and it will work out well if you start focusing on it. All right, cool. Thank you. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.